So let's take a look at this problem here. Um, first of all, if u is a vector in n space, again we write u is an element of or is a member of n space, right? This is the notation. u is said to be a linear combination of these vectors. Now look at these vectors, v, the subscript 1, but notice they're vectors because there's arrows over them, v1, v2 to vn. These are vectors in n space then u is a linear combination if I can write u this way notice uh, k1 through kn those are scalars um, and so this is called a linear combination u is a linear combination of the vectors v1 through vn the scalars uh, k1 through kn are called the coefficients of the linear combination so this is real important here um, in the study of linear algebra to be able to to deal with linear combinations um, and so let's take a look at this problem. Can the vector w, which is notice uh, uh, ordered triple, so it resides in three spaces, element of three space, can it be written as a linear combination of the following three vectors? Okay. So let's see. The, the question is really asking then, uh, do there exist, do there exist scalars? And I'm going to call these scalars k1, k2, and k3, such that um, what k1 v1 plus k2 v2 plus k3 v3 equals w. Right? That's that's really what the, what we're asking. Can, can we write some linear combination? So can I find these? real numbers uh, coefficients, right? Um, and so let's just see what I would have. K1 times V1, so V1 is the vector 1, 2, 3. K2, V2 is 2, 0, negative 1. And V3 is 1, negative 1, 2. Vector W again, 0, negative 1, 11. So getting all these from the information that's given. Okay, so let's use what we know about uh, scalar multiplication and vector addition to combine this as one vector, right? So scalar multiplication, I can multiply, right, k1 by multiplying every component by k1, every component here by k2, and every component here by k3, and then adding these three resulting vectors together, I simply add the corresponding first components together, which would be what? k1 plus what? 2k2 plus what? K3. That would be the first component, right? The second component would be 2K1. K2 times 0 would be 0. And then minus K3. The third component would be 3K1 minus K2 plus 2K3. And again, equal to 0, negative 1, 11. Okay. Now, what do we say? We've got two vectors that are both ordered triples, both reside in three space. When are they equal? They're equal if and only if what? Corresponding components are equal. That means the first component here, this expression here, has to equal what? The first component here, which is 0. So let's just write that out. It's k1 plus 2k2 plus k3 must be 0. Okay. The second component here must be negative 1 and I'm going to write this 2k1 minus k3 over here. Leave a little gap there. That should make you begin to think about what we're doing here. All right, equals negative 1 and then the last component has to equal 11. And what do we have here? What, what do we have here? A good old what? System of linear equations. We have three unknowns in three equations. We know how to solve this, right? I can pop this into um, its augmented matrix and we can do Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination. Let's write out the augmented matrix here. All right. So this is the, the, remember, augmented matrix. coefficient matrix and our constants added 
uh, joined on to that. And then we can use uh, Gauss-Jordan elimination to put this matrix in reduced or echelon form to help us solve the system, right? So we get a leading one here, right? We already got a one. What add negative two times row one to row two, negative three times row one to row three to get zeros here, and so on, right? We get a, need to get a leading one here next. We might need to interchange rows uh, two and three possibly. Um, actually, we went after we, we added negative two times row one to row two, we'd have a negative two here. But at any rate, you get the idea. I'm just going to go ahead and use the calculators command um, at this point, right, the convert to, <coughs> sorry, RREF of, of matrix A and convert those to fraction if I need to, right, don't forget that. Had a little trouble with the little arrow symbol there, convert to fraction. Uh, don't really need it here, but in general you, you want to do that. And so what do we get uh, when we put that into reduce or echelon form? This is what we get, and I would ha have you make sure you confirm that. Which of course tells me that I have exactly one solution. Notice there's a leading one in the location of every variable uh, k1 k2 and k3 so k1 equals 1 k2 equals negative 2 k3 equals 3 okay so we have exactly one solution so let's go back up what was the original question do there exist scalars k1 to k through k3 k1 k2 k3 such that this is true do there exist such scalars yes yes and if there exists such scalars, then what do we say here to this question? Uh, can this vector be written as a linear combination of the following vectors? Yes, we can say now. We can answer the question, right, because of what we have down here. So let's bring this all the way to the top. Yes, because we have a solution. And so in particular, I can write the vector w as k1v1 or 1v1 minus 2v2 plus 3v3 and you should check and make sure you know by actually doing the arithmetic on this right we got v1 v2 and v3 are given and show that it indeed equals the vector w now what when would i answer no to this question when would i answer no to this question well i would answer no right when there wasn't such scalars in other words when i got down here and i had a situation right where I had no solution. If, if this indicated down here, like if I had 0, 0, 0, 1, right, for instance, if I had that for my reduced rush on form, I would know it's an inconsistent system and I would know there's no solution. So if there's no solution, there's no such value of these scalars where we can write this equation out, meaning that we would not be able to write this vector as a linear combination of those, those vectors. And that could happen. Another thing is what? We can get one solution, no solution, or what? We could get infinitely many solutions, right? So for instance, we might only have, we might have one of our variables not having a leading one, and, but it's a consistent system, so we'd have a parameter, right? We would have infinitely many solutions. What would the answer to this question be then? Still would be yes, right? Still would be yes. It's just that there would be more than one way to we can write uh, W as a linear combination of these three vectors. Okay, so you should be able to not only deduce that, but also to give a particular linear combination that works in that case. Okay, so very important. We will be doing this quite a bit, and so it is the connection really between you know the system of linear equations and this idea of linear combinations. Very much a connected idea.